Welcome back to my channel. My name is Brian Kafferke, and we're continuing with lesson 13 in the series Master Databricks and Apache Spark. Now we're doing these lessons in parallel, and the little Databricks icon under the title Using Joins indicates this one will focus on demonstrating the code in Databricks, but we'll also be doing it in Apache Spark. The code for this, the Databricks notebook, will be in a DBC file. The whole thing will be zipped up and out available on GitHub, and I'll post a link in the description for the video. Now, I tend to favor using inner joins. That's my favorite. I like them. They're typically on relational databases, the most efficient join because it just has to match a key on both ends and you're good to go. So that would be your typical inner join, and I've used those a lot in my other videos. So the idea is you've got, say, sales in one table, and then a product code on another that you join to. So the product key on your sales table to the product key on the product table, and then maybe you pull out the product description or something so you can see that in queries. So an inner join is great, but here's the problem. What happens if there is no matching product code? This could happen because A, the product key on the sales table is null, which actually happens in our data as we'll see, or because maybe the product ID isn't in the product table at all for some reason. So using different types of queries, especially the outer types of queries, is something that I typically find is most useful when I'm checking the data integrity. So what do you mean by data integrity? Um, what I mean is that there's sort of assumptions in data in the production system, the original system, we call that the system of record. You'll have like say, we'll say the sales system. Well, if somebody's buying a product, then it makes sense that when they enter that, they're going to select a product and you should have both the sales information, the customer information, and the product information every time. There should be no exceptions, right? It doesn't make sense they bought something, but nobody knows what they bought. However, from those production systems, the data is extracted and pushed typically into data warehouses. My guess is the source of your data is probably coming from these secondary sources like data warehouses, not from production, because there's a lot of issues with pulling data directly from production and it's not generally considered a best practice. So with that exception in mind and having years and years of experience with warehouses, I can tell you there are many reasons why the data can get out of, out of whack. Sometimes it's timing issues. The sales information feeds in before the product table updates. So somebody brought one of the new, bought one of the new codes, but that product hasn't been synced up yet in the warehouse. Or it could be that something happened in the system. There's lots of glitches that can happen. So maybe there was a lapse of some type. And for that reason, you've got null product keys in the sales data, which is not a good situation. Hopefully, you may be able to fix it by having yourself or somebody go back to the original source and try to fix the issue. Anyway, these things happen all the time. And using different types of joins I'm going to show you are a way to identify these kinds of mismatched sets of data in our warehouse. All right, so let's start off here. Um, and by the way, we're going to start by using the database I created in lesson 10, which is the AW project, AdventureWorks. That's our data we'll be using. And just to remind us, this is a SQL notebook. I put the magic percent SQL here, but I don't need to do that you know, later on, so I won't be doing it in other cells. And I'm going to be using the use AW project. I'll also put a link in the description for lesson 10, so you can go back if you haven't done this already, and that will walk you through how to create the tables and you can get the code also it points to in the description of that video where the data is to create these tables. So you get everything there. Let's start by running the cell that will say use AW project. Just doing control enter so I can run the code and stay in that cell. That's how that works. And uh, I've explained notebooks before, so I won't go into detail. Just to show that I, I have tables here, this is a good way to verify. Show tables will let me look. Okay, yep, looks like I have all the tables, so that's good. So let's start looking at our joins. I mentioned the inner join is the most common. I like to use it a lot, but there's a danger to it. The inner join says, I'm going to, for instance, say, pull data from, and they call this the left. The first table you specify here is called the left side of the query. And then this would be called the right side. This is the two points we're connecting. When you're joining, you're always joining from one table to another. Even if there's 
six joins going on, it will always be one table to one table. You know, that's how the joins work. So here I'm saying, I'm, and I'm not doing sales in this case, I'm doing product. So I'm joining the product table to the dim product subcategory table. And I'm going to do that on the key. You can see it here. I'm doing that on product subcategory key, right? So notice I'm using an alias here, P to represent dim product. And I'm using PSC, product subcategory. That's what that stands for on the join. So I'm joining on these two keys. The idea is that from the first table, dim product, I want to get P and I put the aliases here just to be clear what are the columns I'm getting. So from dim product, I'm getting the product key, the English product name, but I'm going to rename it to product. But then from the product subcategory, I'm getting the English product subcategory name, but I'm renaming that subcategory. So I'm using both tables. Now, because it's an inner join, it's the intersection. If you see Venn diagrams, it's the intersection of the two sets, meaning that I'm only going to get rows back that have keys that match between these two tables. So the row is on dim product, but it's also on dim product subcategory. Now, the danger there is, suppose it's not on dim product subcategory, then that row will just drop out of the result set. And that can cause a lot of problems when you're giving results to customers, you're displaying it to management or something, because you, if you have a problem with the data, especially this is product, but if you had problems with, say, the sales data, you might have massive holes in the sales. So the sales could be grossly understated, and that's a problem. And if you miss this, you may lose confidence in management. Like, what are you doing? This is 50 million below on normal sales or something. So it's important to identify these kinds of issues and uh, identify them and clean them up up front. It's even a good idea to periodically run these checks again, just so that you can catch any discrepancies that may come up. I prefer myself not to always do like outer joins and things like that, just to avoid the potential issues. But I do like to use these kinds of methods to identify when problems in the data do come up. All right, so we did, we're going to do this one here. We did this, I think, uh, maybe already we did that. And that's just doing an inner join between them. And there it is. Great. Now I'm limiting it to three just so, you know, I have to kind of look at too much data, I guess. And I've got descriptions here in this notebook. You'll see here looking at other things, uh, describing what are we doing in each join type. In this join, we're doing what's called a left join. A left join is uh, similar to the inner join, except one difference. On the left join, you will always get all rows from the left side of the join, which I mentioned is the first what they call uh, the first table, okay, or table expression it can also be called. So from this part, you always get all rows from dim product, but you may not get the left side. So in other words, if you think you're joining, okay, I'm joining dim product to dim product, dim product subcategory, I'll always get rows back for every product. But if there is no match on product subcategory, I'll get nulls instead. So it won't drop that off and I'll still get the column placeholders, but they will be null. And here I wanted to show that we really do get some nulls in this case. So I'm joining dim product to product subcategory. And you would think there won't be any cases where there is no subcategory. It doesn't really make sense. But if I do this, I'll see that I actually do get that. The next join I want to show you is what's called a full outer join. And generally, at least in relational databases, these are really not good for performance. What this will do is it will show you, it will always return all rows from both sides of relations. That's what they call it, relation. <laughs> so instead of table, I can call it a relation. But the idea is that um, I'm going to be selecting from, in this case, it could be like product, joining to product subcategory. I will get a row back for all products regardless of this is if there's a match on the subcategory, but I'll also get a row back for every product subcategory, whether or not there's a row on the product for it. So I'm going to get, in other words, the full set of both. Now, just to show you what the product categories look like, I'm just going to run this and get an idea. You can see the categories, uh, subcategories make sense, right? Mountain bikes, road bikes, touring bikes. That's the kind of things uh, we'd expect at AdventureWorks. So what I want to do now is do a full auto join. So I'm going to be selecting some columns. 
All of these are product except for this last piece. I'm getting the subcategory name. I'm starting with the dim product. I'm doing a full outer join for the product subcategory right here. And I'm doing the key match here. Let's run this and see what it looks like. So as I said, interestingly, we have a lot of products here, right, that have no product subcategory. It's right here. Um, no. Now, it turns out that in this case, it's not a null in the database sense. The null you're seeing under product subcategory is actually a text string because I extracted this from the SQL Server table that was part of the AdventureWorks data. And apparently, this was a null value. So it just put a literal text value of null in there. However, it's still a problem. And this can happen if you extract data like that from different types of databases. So I do have a, an issue with the data here. And I wanted to show you. Um, if I try something like this, now I'm getting rid of those. And you can see that we do have values where they, they match as well. So the full outer join is going to return the full set of data either way. I wanted to comment this out so you could see that we do have a lot of nulls. But I also wanted to show you they're not all nulls. A lot of things do have matches. So that's the full outer join. I do not use full auto joins very much. I use left, I use inner joins probably the most, and after that would probably be left joins. And I always start with the sort of detail centered table the most, like sales would be probably the first table when I do joins, uh, even on an inner or left join, and then I kind of work out the other stuff. Because I always want to get my sales rows back. I don't want to lose those. Um, so then I would use the left join. So what's a left semi join? Now this is actually kind of something I hadn't looked at much. I, mean, I go way back and so my SQL, they didn't even have this semi-join when I started back in the day. But let's take a look with the semi-join. Here it's returning the left side of the relation that has a match with the right, but it returns no rows from the right, whether, whether or not there's a match. So it's, it's basically going to say, I'm going to show you the left, join it to the right, and only return the left columns, those rows, that have a match on the right. So it's kind of an interesting thing. So it's like the inner join, except it's not going to return any rows from the right relation. So if I run this query, it's really almost identical to an inner join. You can see this here. Um, however, it's not giving me any rows, any values back from the second table in the join, the right table here. If I try to run this, I just uncommented this out to try to pull a column in from product subcategory, and I get an error. So you can't do that. Not, not good. So the purpose of this is you're really just using the second table as a way to validate the first. You want to make sure that there is, in fact, a dim product subcategory for all of the rows in product. Or you only want to get those that have a match. So that's the idea. I'm subsetting this. If I wanted to, for instance, extract just products, where there is a product subcategory, this is a way I could do that. Um, however, you've got to be careful because that may not be a valid way to query, as I mentioned. It seems to me every product should have a product subcategory, so I would still raise questions there. OK, so that's semi-join. What about a cross-join? A cross-join is a very odd case. I've only used these a handful of times, less than what is in my hand uh, in real life. They're useful for only case I've, uh, use case I've seen is when you need what's called a Cartesian product of the values. And what do I mean by that? Well, let's imagine we have A, B, C. And on the other table, we have C, D, E, F. What you're going to get is every combination of A with every value on the right, every combination of B with every value on the right. It doesn't really make a lot of sense that you'd want this. Essentially, you don't even need a There's no join value. You're not trying to join on a key. The place where I've used this is way back when we implemented a general ledger in a financial system. General ledgers typically have a validation process where they need to know that every key segment, they call it, is valid. So a key segment would be uh, something like cost center, profit center, accounting key, uh, could be company number, any number of things. And it can be any number of these sort of separate keys. And when a, an amount is getting posted to the general ledger in accounting, and don't worry if you don't know this, what it means, but when something's getting posted, it will just essentially check and say, is that a valid combination of values? 
And so when we did this, we were implementing a new general ledger system, and I needed to get every possible combination of my cost centers and uh, yeah, cost centers, profit centers, account keys, etc. And we had maybe like a dozen. So there was no good way to just get every possible value. So you, we only had a handful of rows in each table. Here's you know 20 values of account keys. Here's 20 uh, cost centers, etc. But when you did the permutation, the Cartesian product, it turned into thousands. So this was a nice time saver. It's the only time I've ever really seen a use for it. But that's when you can do it. So again, here I'm going to show you what do the product categories look like to demonstrate this. We have bikes, components, clothing, and accessories. What I want to do is generate the Cartesian product using a cross join of the product category name with the subcategory. So I'm just going to get every category and every subcategory. And I'm using the cross join. And notice there is no join relation. I'm just doing cross join. That's about it. And uh, you can see here, so it's like bikes and every possible bike that could go with that. Mind you, it's not doing any cross checks. So bikes could be matching to hats or purses or whatever else is in here. It'll basically match bikes to every possible combination. So we can see bikes is connecting to the subcategory brakes. Clothing is also mapped to brakes. So in this particular case, it's not a terribly useful thing, but in some cases, it will be something you want to do. And finally, I want to talk about what's called the anti-join. They're against joins. Uh, anti-joins are really interesting because what happens here is they return values on the left side only when there's no match on the right. So we did the uh, earlier join, we did the semi-join, which said, well, only we only return these rows on the left when there's a matching set on the right, a matching row on the right. But here the anti-join says only return the rows that don't exist on the right. Now that's actually a really good join to use in validating data. Show me sales, but only show me sales where I don't have a product code for that sale. And then that's kind of a list. I'm going to go to management and say, okay, somebody want to tell me why we have a billion dollars in sales with no product? And really, probably not going to go to management. Uh, you go, might go to the tech team, you know, BI team, did a warehouse. They may have to kick it back if it goes all the way back to the production system. More than likely, it's a glitch somewhere, and it happens all the time. And uh, you just say, yeah, that that's a glitch on our side. We had a problem in the load two weeks ago, and we didn't fix it yet or something. So really good to do these things. So let me run this. And you can see a product key, product subcategory. Now, as before, um, let me run it here. Where I'm going to say where product subcategory key is null. And I didn't really do that because that's not what I really want to do. But I want to demonstrate, just like the semi-join, we can't do this because it's not returning those columns. It's only returning what's on the product table because of that's our left side of the join. So anti-joins are kind of interesting. Now, the anti-join, the semi-join, Back in the day, we, we would work that around doing those without those actual statements. And you can do that just by filtering on null keys, etc. But you got these, so you might as well use them. Okay, so so wrapping up, not a lot to talk about here, but we talked about all the different kinds of joins there are. Inner joins, outer joins, and everything in between. They're useful, and as I mentioned, I typically would stick with mostly left joins or left inner joins, or just inner joins, really. So those are two big ones, but the other ones do have places, they are good, and you may need them. The outer joins are particularly good for validating data, so use them for that, and when you need an outer join, remember, they're there. You want to be very careful whenever you're joining data not to drop good data. If you have sales and you use inner joins, you could be losing valid sales, and that can cause you a lot of problems, and you could end up losing the confidence of your users. So don't want to do that. So that's about it. Please like, share, and subscribe as usual. Um, remember, I'm pulling for you. We're all in this together. Thanks.